it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2014. I'm standing here with Fred George, uh, the programmer anarchist, uh, who's going to be talking about programmer anarchy. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, what is programmer anarchy? And I, I mean, I don't see a big A on your. On your I shirt. do have one of those t-shirts. Oh. <laughs> you know, fist, you know, yeah, anarchy yeah. Fist. Well, actually, programmer anarchy is kind of a. a Sort of a natural refinement of the agile processes. Okay. Uh, and I think the more you push agile processes, the more you learn over time about how fast things can go and get go mm -hmm. faster and some other things. And so basically, it was a label I applied. That's frankly a con very controversial label, right. um, but it does have the traditional sense of anarchy, which is a team that's basically self-organizing. That right. the organization it doesn't mean chaos. Doesn't mean chaos, which is number two definition. But yeah. number one definition is a group that the organization is actually determined from within the group, mm -hmm. rather than being imposed from the outside of the group. Okay. Uh, there's a little book. Uh, it's kind of interesting called The Invisible Hook, which was about the social organization of pirates. Oh, really? And you think about it, pirates didn't have a rule book that says you're going to be captain. You're going to be captain for three years. Then we rotate the first mate, become captain. There's no rule right. book there. And you, you wound up seeing these these pirates basically morph their organization as they needed to mm -hmm. get the ship from A to B. This guy who's very good about organizing people who's fair will be in charge. Uh, but when he gets to be attacking that merchant ship, it's some other crazy dude waving his saber, jumping across, yeah. doing silly things. And so to some degree, you want the team to be the same way. Say, so here's a team, here's a problem. You guys organize yourself. And it may be over time, projects change, their focus changes, um, the needs of a project change. You may need different people in there. But you want that organization to sort of to know that because they're the people that know what the best and when those right. critical points are. People from the outside are looking in, maybe doing reviews, trying to do stuff like that. They don't really know the magic moment when changes are necessary. Right. But we, even when we can afford to roll somebody off. Right. So we try to, you know, basically we try to push that back into the team. So basically this is kind of the self-organizing team concept uh, under a you know, very controversial label. Right. Um, or is it, is it more just trying to use that term anarchy to – Encourage uh, a thought like a, a it, it is. I mean, it, I, I totally took a page out of Kent Beck's book. You know, he <laughs> called it extreme programming. And I can tell you, right. back back in the day when he talked about that, and I had this conversation with Kent. It's like, dude, this name is very scary. When I go to corporate clients and say I want to do extreme programming, yeah. they're already scared of programmers enough. Extreme programmers, <laughs> that's really scary. They're yeah. jumping off buildings. What are these guys going to yeah. be doing? But it got the tension. You know, and eventually we kind of watered it down and called it agile, and that was a much more acceptable word for right. corporate. So. I'm trying to do the same thing. You know, push the programmer anarchy as being sort of get your attention, but the way we're organizing, you don't have to call it anarchy. It basically is a self-organizing team. There are other people that talk about this as well. Okay, so it's just an, it, it's kind of uh, putting a, a seed for people to, to to pay attention and hear the word, but to get them thinking about no, we don't necessarily need to have always top down out in organizations. And I, I gotta say, I didn't really come. I, I came up with the term. I, I, I'll take credit for the term or take the blame for the term. But the organization itself was something I observed in one of the companies I worked with in, mm -hmm. uh, in London. And basically it was a small group, but they basically started doing these things. First of all, they didn't have any project managers. Oh, really? Uh, nope. No, it was the idea that we're programmers. We know how to get the stuff out the door. Mm -hmm. Who's who's project manager necessary? I don't need any BAs. I want to talk to the customer directly. Mm -hmm. Don't need any QA because QA is a very complex process and complex systems. And it sounds like programmer work to me and architect right. work. So. We came with this kind of very flat structure says we're developers. In fact, we actually got rid of all the even managers of the developers. It was a concept of a manager of a developer. So basically, it's just developers that says, get the code out the door. Um, and we kind of pushed up the interaction level with the customer. We sort of started out, in most agile things, is about stories. It's like, customer will sell a story, we'll do it. We'll tell them, tell them the next story, let's do it. Tell me another story, let's do it. Right. We wanted to re-raise that up to say, tell me what you want to accomplish and then get out of our way. Because right. we know how to best execute this. We're smart. We can pick up domains. They say, oh, no, you don't understand. My domain's really complicated. You're saying, mm -hmm. gee, you think your domain's more complicated than Clojure? Right. Or right. more complicated than the tools I work with? I'll yeah. switch with you one of the days. We'll sort of see. But you know, <laughs> if you don't think I can understand complex stuff, you don't understand my world. Right, right. It's, it's, programming is complexity. And, and, we, and we embrace it. Uh, we have It's coming at us like a fire hose. We absorb it, and we keep doing this. So... Accounting, I'm sorry, accounting is pretty, pretty well the same as the Phoenicians had, mm -hmm. you know, and you look at these various fields and there's nothing really new there compared to the rapid change that we have in our domain. Right. Yeah, it's a codifiable system in that you can write it in code, but 
almost codifiable. I mean, code itself is almost not codifiable. It's kind of crazy. And one of the things we take advantage of is how fast we can go now. So, you know, with the advent of the cloud, I can now get virtual machines quickly. And it's not right. a matter of having to plan what's going to happen for the next year and go get the capital budget approved. And mm -hmm. I don't do those things anymore. I, I get one in five minutes. Yeah. And if it's making money, I get another one in five minutes. You know, it's not a matter of having to pre-plan all this stuff. And so mm -hmm. as the cycles got faster and faster, this concept of specialization becomes more difficult to implement. You know, right. the handoffs between various people can be absolutely crazy. Yeah, and and with with the uh, the focusing on micro focus that kind of makes me think about the microservices, which you're also known for for talking about, is that um, are these related? Is there is the anarchy and, and the self governing similar to like the, the the goal of keeping services very small and focused? And it turns out they dovetail very nicely. You know, I originally thought there would be orthogonal issues that there's yeah. this process and there's architecture and they're and they're orthogonal. It turns out they're actually highly interrelated. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to go faster. Our business allowed us to go fast. We were doing internet advertising through Google at the time. And you get feedback cycles in a 20 minute time frame. From something I right. do it in Google like, to 20 minutes till I start getting feedback about it, pretty fast. And it was it was the cycle times that kept driving us to, okay, let's make a specialist. Let's don't do a separate QA process. Uh, let's use some techniques like A-B testing and, and uh, some other things like that to sort of keep driving new code out there. We got to the point where we were delivering something new into production about every three and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a prodigious, wow. prodigious, you know. Yeah, you know, three minutes is, you yeah. talked about 10 hours in the previous interview from uh, idea to inception, but now you're talking three minutes. From well, it was the average. We, every program is basically basically shipping twice a day yeah. uh, in the cost of your entire organization. And it would ship something small. It's a small enhancement. It either works or doesn't work. If it doesn't work, stop doing it. If it does work, you know, you know feed on it. Let's do something else. Mm -hmm. And we basically created a feedback system that let us work in these domains that have fast feedback. We were able to exploit these domains. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, frankly, we avoid any domain that would say build a product and you got to figure out it's going to take six months to figure out whether it's successful or not. We stay away from those domains. We're in e-commerce, we're in internet advertising, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. What when, when I hear about like um, small, um, self-sufficient teams, I ironically I think more about like the military and the squad structure where you have a, a smallest unit of 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 self-organized. Or internal structure where it can be everybody communicates with everybody else and they can all work off of each other, but they still have to be able to operate inside of a larger system. Even though these programmers are are uh, working independently uh, and, and able to de define their own way to deliver, but they still have to exist inside of an ecosystem, uh, a larger organization sometimes well how do you um, yeah, which i mean even though going back to again squad systems particularly in some of the western militaries mm -hmm. are, are very good examples of this um they're given objectives says so here's right. the, here's the objective i want to accomplish we, we think it's we think it's going to we think it's going to succeed we think it's a good chance of succeeding but we know that when you get in there and actually try to do it you know trying to micromanage you remotely is not going to work you're going to you're going to be in that environment uh, they've cross-trained around, around skills. I mean, they're they're basically very poly-skilled workers in their own right. Right. Uh, and that works very well. But is it, but setting the objectives at a high level, very important. Telling them how to execute the objectives, not so important. You want to train them. You want to make sure they have the right skills and, and the skills across the team cover the whole spectrum of things they might run into. Right. Uh, but they can also run into something completely surprising. They'll either innovate or they'll withdraw. I mean, they, right. you know, they do the right things. And you want the program teams to be very much the same way. Yeah. And... Um, Looking at not just uh, programmers, but stepping outside of our day-to-day -day, uh, programming world, because I'm focused on the community as well, and I look at user groups, do you see any correlation between the desire to self-define what you're working on it being reflected inside the community at all, or is that a totally... No, there's, there's some analogies there. I mean, to some degree, you look at uh, some of the best open source projects, and you look at, okay, who's who's the manager, and who's the business guy, and who's the QA team? They have got those roles. Right. It's this, they're basically they're definitely self-organizing. You know, a few yeah. guys sort of own the commitment rights, and everyone else is sort of contributing, and they get invited to the party if they're a really good contributor, and mm -hmm. they can be inside the group. Uh, but they, basically, it's the same sort of structure. You see the same things about startups. You know, you get a yeah. new startup, and everybody knows what they're working on. They're, they know, I, as a programmer, I know exactly what business we're in, and I know what the marketing stands. But somehow, when we get these things a little larger, we feel a need to put a CTO in place who's going to see she went this, and the business team is going to shield me from this. And all of a sudden, in this organization, I'm not sure what I'm working on and why I'm working on it. Yeah, and when you say shield, it's like all about encapsulation. 
and that maybe even that sounds like even protection. You know, that they want to protect well, themselves and it becomes uh, a little bit of a, like you want to put up these barriers to protect your own interests. Well, to some degree, it's also VC sometimes pushing you to put a formal structure in place because they're thinking about, okay, you're going to become SAP one of these days. We need the structure and mm-hmm. you got to have a guy named a CTO. you got to have a name to CFO. you got to have these titles. And people start thinking about the titles actually part of their job instead of, mm-hmm. hey, we're still trying to solve problems. We want to make sure everybody understands what problems we're trying to solve. Right. So with the company in London, we kind of went out of our way to make sure we never put that structure in place. Right. Uh, and if we ever try to do that, one of my roles was to make sure it says, no, no, we don't want this sort of organizational structure. We, we want to keep ourselves fairly loose and undifferentiated at some level, mm-hmm. uh, keep our resources flat. Yeah. Uh, and we, we made, you know, it's very successful in business because of that. And, you know, just one thing, I, as we were walking into this interview, I, I asked about social anarchy. Are you looking at, um, it, I, I doubt you just use the term anarchy just strictly to be, um, uh, Controversial and get people's attention, but have you, I mean, I know there's, there's, there's actually, writing a lot of. Actually, it is pretty much just pretty much just a, oh. it, it is a, it's strictly a marketing term. Okay. You, if you look, so, if you peel back the covers, we still believe in you know basic principles of 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 agile. We believe in feedback. We believe in communication. We believe in simplicity. We believe in courage. We believe in respect. It's just that when you start putting practices around this, particularly in, in, in light of microservices, mm-hmm. all of a sudden the microservices you know 20, 30 lines of code. Do we need a unit test? Probably not. Right. It's only 20, 30 lines of code. If you can't do that, find yourself a new career. <laughs> and we don't care what language you write in because it's right. running independently of every other piece of code. Mm-hmm. And so you, you could write one in Ruby. I could write one in Closure. And you could turn around and say, we write mine into Visual Basic. I don't care because it's so rest, restful interfaces and JSON packets. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, run some in Node. I don't, you don't care. Right. And so you're, you're, uh, all you're really asking people is understand what it is. And if you don't like it, replace it. It's right. not a matter of having to refactor it. In fact, why would you use design patterns? It's 30 lines of code. <laughs> uh, why would you worry about you know any of these sorts of things? Because it's 30 lines of code. Yeah. And all of a but sudden, then, but you have lots of 30 lines of code, though. But they're yeah. So it's kind of like you know cells of your body. You know, you think yeah. about it. This this is you. You're still you. Yeah. But none of those cells that you were born with are there anymore. They're dead. Right. They're gone. They're gone. But you're still you. But you're a complex organism. Um, and so I think our systems are very complex. When you talk about systems that have millions of lines of code in them, whether it's broken into 30 line services or, or one giant, you know, three, 10 million line of code tarball, it's complicated. You still don't know how it's working. Right. Uh, so you don't necessarily lose anything with microservices in a complex environment. You don't necessarily gain anything either. Except if you happen to be you know, outsourcing this piece of code and you just turn it out to be a horrible programmer and you write right. this really ugly microservice, the impact is only the service. I can rewrite it's three lines of code, I can rewrite it. Yeah, the damage you can do in my application is very constrained because of microservices. So by keeping things super small, you're able to say, okay, if there's something that goes wrong, you can narrow it down onto that one exactly and instead of having to be like, how do I replace this monolithic thing and, that has all these inner and, and some of the problems with object-oriented systems that we've discovered over the years is, yeah, so you build a really lovely object-oriented system has all these same traits, but here comes the program that doesn't know anything, and he starts ripping the data out of it, starts putting publishing getters and setters all in its methods, starts yeah. pulling the data out. Now everybody knows this data. Everybody's running the algorithms every place, and now you can't change anything. Right. A microservice, it's a little hard to go in there and grab an internal piece of data. Right. I mean, unless you're going to open this up and put a new API in it. Right. So it actually, it's, it's, it's sort of encapsulation carried to a really extreme that's very powerful. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate well, it. Thank you. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.